What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite hillbilly here, coming to you live. Well, some of us are anyway. Out of Hog Holler, Tennessee. How y'all doing? Hope y'all having a good weekend. It's gonna jump on here. This ain't the intended story. I've got one saved up on my phone. Uh, it's real good when I left some of the details out though. I might have to reshoot it. I might post it out. And I shot it the last time that I shot my last video. Which, by the way, um, the reason I'm not going any further into this graveyard tonight, I've seen enough of that stuff in my life. I don't go looking for it. If you watched my last video, you'll see that I picked up something there and that I really wished I hadn't of. I'm not a ghost hunter. And I, I don't set out to do that or to even pretend to see ghosts to get likes or views or anything. I think I've ever caught anything like that in any of the videos I've ever done. But uh, at the 120 mark, because I'm talking to y'all, um, telling you about a bad rotten smell I'm smelling coming out of garbage cans is what I'm thinking. And uh, evidently, something walks right past me and it doesn't run and it's not a little blip or it's not a bush in the distance you know it's this is something that's actually you can see the legs moving walking slow it's not running looks like two of them and walks right past me as i'm talking and it looks like one of them even stops and turns their head and looks at me and watches me as i'm walking they come into frame at the 120 moment and they're in the frame a good i don't know three four five seconds something like that just walking toward me as I'm walking toward them to the right uh, creep me out people started commenting saying who was those people up there that you was walking walking near you I said oh, I didn't nobody I was by myself so I go back and watch it and sure enough there it is and it gives me the creeps so I didn't set out to try to find anything like that like I said I've seen enough of that stuff in my time but also, uh, somebody called it 1416. You can hear a scream coming from, I don't know, it don't sound like it's that far away. It sounds like somebody got up in the phone and tried to do it. I, I didn't catch that neither. I don't watch my videos over usually. But anyway, uh, I'm going to tell y'all a real quick story on here. Um, I have some personal stuff in there, some history, my family history that Probably won't mean nothing to y'all, but it might be a little fascinating. Yeah, we're going to stay on the edge here tonight. Um, back when we used to go fox hunting and stuff, and like I said, we don't try to kill the fox. The dog runs the fox, and you want the fox to live, so when you go back two or three nights later, they can, what they call it, they call it a fox race. They can run again while you sit there and build a fire and shoot the bull. But, uh, and we'd rotate around. We'd hunt somewhere about a month, and we'd go somewhere else and hunt a month or six weeks, and then we'd go somewhere else and just, you know, make a big circle. Well, there's this one place that we used to hunt, and they called it Hangman's Hollow. And uh, that's a whole another story in itself right there. But, so we go to Hangman's Holler, and we go hunting up there. And uh, this is when we first started going there. I, I'm probably 13, no, I'm probably 10 maybe, younger than that. We start going, and I can remember my aunts talking about a, a spook light that used to be in the woods. You know, not up in the sky or not off. If you stand on the mountain and look off in the holler up on the mountain, if you look between the trees, way in the distance, you'd see this light, and it wouldn't move. But if you started walking toward it, it's like you never got any closer to it. But it kept feeling like you was about there. I don't know if something leading people or what, but that's that's the how it makes you feel. Um, you get the desire to want to see what it is. You get I'm this close. I've got to know now. But uh, and it was scary. It scared us. It didn't. It don't come out every night. Uh, you know, you go a long time without seeing it, and then you might see it every night for a month or two. But uh, when it first started showing up, I remember it scared me to death. My uncle told me not to go off over there around it. He said it was people. And I said, uh, 
that ain't people. And he'd tell me it was people all the time. And I'd say, well, well why do you think it's people? And he would say, because it's flickering. And that didn't mean anything to me at that age. And I thought, well, okay, it's flickering. He said, that's people walking in front of it, back and forth. And he said, and they're busy tonight. And you could look down there. If you stared at it, you'd see the, the flicker in it sometimes. So I don't know. That thing had been there since they were kids and their parents was kids. So I still wasn't satisfied that's people that's been around that long going over there and stuff. So I asked my aunt about it. One of my aunts, they all know about it. I don't know about all this stuff back in the holler when I was a kid. But uh, she asked me, she said, uh, what, what color is it? I said, it's green. It's like that up there. It's like the color, you know, when you buy something that glows in the dark, that color. And she, more or less, I was that ain't nothing to worry about. She said, I, I used to know the colors. She said her mama taught her the colors. She said, that light changed colors, it means something, you know. She said, the, the one thing that she remembered growing up was that some people saw it one night in the woods and it changed to yellow, real bright yellow. And one of their children in the community drowned the next day. And there was other stuff I can't remember, but more or less, like this thing can warn you of stuff or, you know, whatever. So... We'd go and we'd see that through the years. And like I say, it would be in different places. And sometimes we'd get brave and we'd go a little ways to it. And at that point, it feels like it's just wanting you to come a little closer. But um, this particular night, me and my cousin, we're going off in the woods there. And something had happened the night before at the local skating rinks. And I don't remember what now, but we was going back there to talk about it and where nobody can hear us talk. And while we're talking, there that spook light comes on. And uh, I pointed out to him. I was like, look at that right there. And he's like, yeah, it's kind of close tonight, ain't it? I'm like, yeah, it is. That's the closest I think I've seen it. But it's still a good distance away. You know, it ain't right nearest by no means. So, uh, of course, now I'm going to keep my own it while he's telling me what happened. And while he's talking, all of a sudden the edges of this thing start to glow a little red. Just around the edges. The center is still green, if you can picture that. But now it's starting to turn like a little red, only around the edges. And I point that out to him. That's the first time we've ever seen it do anything other than just be green. You know, or move from place to place every now and then. We always thought maybe it was a rock, you know. I mean, who knows? But anyway, when this thing started turning red around the edges, I knew that it wasn't anything of this world for sure. So I pointed out and we head back to the fire. Liggity split. And the uh, time we get back to the fire, it's normal green again. I point out to my uncle. He gets mad because he don't like talking about any kind of paranormal stuff at all. So uh, he calms down and we're there a little bit longer and me and my cousin decided we're gonna climb a tree he's gonna get in one tree on one side of the fire and i'm gonna get in the tree on the other side we set up our these big old oak trees and set on the limb so we done that we climb up there and we're sitting now here's the part that y'all don't know yet my uncle and his wife could not have kids so they adopted a little boy is about two or three years old and we'll call him Jackie and they adopted Jackie and Jackie he had a demon in him or something the boy was mean uh, he died in prison but he had actually plotted on killing my uncle and my aunt after he got about 18 just to steal and take their money and the girlfriend he had at the time told that he was doing this, that this was the plan. So my uncle waited up on him that night and uh, my uncle almost killed him. But then the police came and they took him to prison because he'd had a bunch of other charges, robbery and everything. So he's, 
you know, he's gone. He's gone to prison, and uh, none of us ain't seen or heard from him in a long time. And he was just sorry somebody to try to kill the man and woman that raised him just for whatever few dollars they had. He worked at the hardware store, so it wasn't much. So anyway, we're sitting there, and all of a sudden here comes a truck down through the trail right there that cuts through the woods. You can hear it for a long ways. And all of a sudden, now you can get a glimpse of the headlights coming. Kind of old beat up truck flopping around. My uncle says, boys, stay up in them trees right there where you're at. Because we was outside the fire. If you ever build a fire, you can't see past it. The fire blinds you, and he knew that. So we was outside the fire. And uh, that truck comes wobbling up through there. We're like, why are you wanting us to, you know, get down? There's more of us. He said, that might be Jackie. He got out of prison today, this morning. And that might be him just looking for me because I sent him to prison. Actually, he sent himself to prison. So now our heart's beating because Jackie's a killer. And everybody knew that was going to happen one day. And he did kill somebody. But this night here, he comes pulling up. Sure enough, it's him. He gets out of the truck. And they start into each other, cuss, fighting and cussing and cussing. And then it breaks out. And I mean, they start fighting. Well, Jackie's ready for my uncle this time. He thought he'd catch him asleep last time. He finally, he gets a ball bat or a tire tool, I can't remember, out of the bed of that old truck. And my uncle's getting the best of him. He gets that tire tool, hits my uncle with it once. My uncle's trying to get away from him around the truck. He's going to catch him, and he's going to beat him to death right there in front of us. So all of a sudden, we start coming down out of those trees. I mean, we got to do something. Even if it's pick up rocks and throw at him, we could outrun him. But we start coming down out of those trees and making the loudest racket you've ever seen because we're hurrying. Well, he hears this, and he turns, and he tries to look and see what's out there, but he can't see nothing because of the fire. But he hears something, two things, just breaking trees in two. And this scares him so bad. The look on his face. He hopped in that truck. And he ran over trees and stumps and everything getting out of there. He thought a Bigfoot or something was coming down after him. And, uh, yeah, if we hadn't intervened and stayed out there at the in the woods, I feel like that, uh, that was trying to push us back to the fire, trying to scare us back. If we'd stayed out there, my uncle probably wouldn't have lived as long as life as he did. Because that would have been the end of him that night. And that's what me and my cousin sat down and talked about and talked to my aunts about it. They all cried. Said that's exactly what it was. But I don't know why something would warn you of something like that. But still, it puts off an evil, evil feeling. You know, it's just like it's something there beckoning you, calling you to come to it. But I think it warned us that night that trouble was on the way. So we went back. Now, as far as my cousin Jackie goes, I'm going to tell y'all something here. It's a little personal, and I don't know. It may bore you a little bit. But I think it'll interest you. <clears throat> my cousin Jackie went to jail just after this a little ways. Um... Uh, he was being chased by the police one night through Gatlinburg. And he went up like you're going through the Great Smoky Mountains. And the park rangers had set out a roadblock to stop him. And uh, he goes running through that roadblock and he hits one of the park rangers. And it kills him. It doesn't kill him right then. He dies later. He dies later from injuries due to this. I think it's actually, they put it down as he died of pneumonia from infection or something. But he was in the hospital bed forever. <clears throat> and I think this was like, oh, this had to be like 82, maybe. It was early. It was early. And uh, so they send him to Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, Jackie. And uh, time goes on. My uncle dies. My aunt dies. So, it's probably the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. At the funeral, we're all sitting there and I'm the pallbearer. Well, Jackie's in prison. 
in Middle Tennessee. But they're going to let him come to his mama's funeral. Okay. Well, they're late getting there. So we're sitting in the church. Church is full. We're sitting. We're sitting. We're waiting. Everybody knows what we're waiting on, you know. All of a sudden, the doors come open. And here comes three or four agents in the room. And they sort of look the room over. Dressed in suits and stuff. And then, it's just like you'd see in the movies, they motion to bring him in. And here he comes in. And he is shackled. And he is chained. His wrists are chained and his feet's chained. He's got the orange jumpsuit on. I mean, and he comes up the aisle. Well, he's got a little girl. I think she's about five years old. And she sees him. She had not seen him in a couple of years. And she says, Daddy. And she goes to reach for him. And one of them agents actually puts his hand on her head and woes her. No, you can't touch your daddy. And... Tears started rolling down the church house, the floor. Uh, he goes up there and he sits down in his shackles. She's about four rows behind him, screaming, crying, I want my daddy, I want my daddy. Here he is sitting there in his prison jumpsuit. And they won't let the little girl even go up and hug him. I guess they're afraid she'll slip him a machine gun. I don't know. But, um, of course, you know, those people... Their husband, father lost his life due to this man too. So, what are you gonna do? Feel sorry for the little girl, I guess. But anyway, he died in prison. That's where he finally died at back know, seven, eight years ago. I think it was right after Brushy Mountain closed down. They moved him somewhere else and he died. But uh, anyway, guys, I thought I'd hop on here and tell you my story about the light in the woods uh, it's kind of been a topic here lately on some youtube channels and stuff i know if you watch the good folks my friends over at the hellbent holler they've actually got a video looks about drop that they've got a video where they see like this burning light in the woods and it doesn't look like mine what i saw but it's something that's very very interesting uh, I'd take a look at it, y'all. It's it's something very weird. But um, that's what jogged my mind to remember to do this video was uh, when I watched that, and I've had it on my mind to shoot this video for a while, and I always got something else to do in front of it, so I had the time to shoot it and talk to y'all for a few minutes. But, yeah, those these things have been spotted in the woods, and I remember my uncle telling me nothing good comes from a light you see in the middle of the woods. And we'd see other stuff quite like that, but that was the most stunning and amazing thing, you know, that I, I saw as far as the lights go. But I want to address something else real quick. Uh, somebody sent me to uh, somebody's video the other day that was hunting feral men. You don't hunt feral men, first off, but... That's not what scared me. These uh, guys are got shorts on and they're walking in like knee high grass. And this is timber rattler country and copperhead country. And uh, they're walking in grass with shorts on that they can't, you know, they can't see. It's knee high, ankle high, I guess maybe. It don't have to be very high for a snake to be in it, but the uh, snakes love that vine and stuff to get in there. And man, I just knew that they was gonna get bit. But uh, a tip to everybody out there, if you get off trail somewhere, which I don't advise, or you find yourself walking where there's real thick grass like that, that tall, and it's it's season for the snakes, if you'll get you a stick like this, and you just hit that stick on the ground as you walk, like that right there, the vibration, and this is an old folks trick, the vibration off this stick hitting the ground, will the snakes will clear out your way. So if you can't see them, you can at least warn them that you're coming. And they do not want a confrontation. They will go the other way. And worse comes to worse, your stick hits a snake or something. Well, it's going to get out of your way then too. At least you didn't step on it. But I thought I'd throw that tip out there to some of you all. If you find yourself in that situation to try to save you from getting snake bit. But anyhow, guys, I guess I'll jump off from here. I'll probably post that other video some point i really need to go back and shoot it again 
I left out a lot of details. I'm bad about that. I get done with these stories, I'm telling y'all, and I leave out some good details that, you know, that I should have put in there that would make the story better or make it more understandable. I, that happens a lot because I don't rehearse these and I don't edit them. I just talk and talk. So maybe one day somebody helped me put it in a book, but I ain't pushing that neither. So anyhow, guys, hop off from here this time for real. I hope y'all have a good weekend and stay safe, everybody. And I'll be back before you know it.